last week, I promised you guys that I was going to give you a tour of the rig that I'm traveling in this year, and this is it. Welcome to Peanut, my 2011 Airstream Bambi 16RB. Happy Sunday, bird watchers! I hope you're all doing great out there. Now, if you didn't see last week's Sunday video, this might be a little bit confusing to you if you regularly watch my channel. No, I am not traveling in the truck camper now. I'm traveling in this little baby peanut Airstream. I love it, and the reasons that I chose this for this year I talk about in the last video, so go back and look at that if you want to know about that. The 16RB is the floor plan that I wanted because it's got a bed in the back with all the big windows and then a dinette in the front, which I use as an office, and on both ends you get these really great big windows. Now this little baby is tiny. I was stuck in a snowstorm in this thing for three days in Gallup, New Mexico, and I was trying to get my steps in, and it was like from the bed to the living room. I was like, one, two, turn, one, two, turn. It's little, but it's so little that the dry weight is about 3,500 pounds, and I can pull it with a Jeep Grand Cherokee, and it is so easy to hook up and unhook by myself. And so um, I'm going to give you the inside tour today um, because I'm in a truck stop right now, and I don't want people looking in the windows, so that's why my blinds are done. But here are some pictures of the outside of Little Peanut. Isn't it the cutest thing you've ever seen? I have to tell you that I discovered this little baby in a listing on RV Trader. A lady and her husband in Louisiana were selling it, and I had a dream that I got a little baby Airstream like this, and I called it Peanut. And in their listing, they said, we're sorry that we have to sell our little Peanut. And I thought, well, it's serendipity. That's it. So um, we came to terms, and she drove towards me, and I drove towards her, and we met in Texas, and I picked it up. Um, and there was a little drama there uh, with the title. And I learned a lot. I'm going to tell you guys about that in an upcoming video. So for sure, subscribe and hit the little bell if you're looking for information on that. And here's a picture of Little Peanut and my Grand Cherokee at a rest area the first night. was not hard to pull at all. Um, I do not have a weight distribution hitch yet. Um, I'm looking at different ones right now. I'm just pulling it on the ball. But you can see here... I've gone all kinds of places in this thing, and I have loved it because the windows are huge, and it's just easy. Okay, so let's take a look around. It's really cozy back here in the bedroom. It's perfect for one person. I could see there being two, but it would be a little bit cramped. I mean, with just me back here, I can use one side of the bed to hold some of my clothes and my extra linens, and I get to decorate it however I want. So yeah, I got a disco ball, and at night, when I've got my little solar lanterns in here and the ball is going around, it's like my own little happy nest. Here's the closet. Again, not a ton of storage, but one thing that the prior owner did that I loved is they put in these little shelves and then I added these bins so stuff didn't fall over. Um, it's laundry day, you can see. But I'm able to hold, um, you know, a few things in here. No problem. And then, of course, I always have storage on my doors as well. There's only one drawer in here, and that's it. Not a lot of kitchen storage. The kitchen is tiny. It's got a microwave, which, of course, I use to store plates like most of us do, and a tiny refrigerator and a little sink. Now, one important thing about the 16RB is that there is not a bathroom sink. The bathroom is small, and it's a wet bath. This is the first wet bath that I've had. I'm getting used to it. There's a couple things about this Airstream that I wish were a little bit different. One of them is that the hot water heater is on demand only. So as a boondocker, I like to take a Navy shower, you know, where you turn the water on and suds up, turn the water off, turn it back on. Well, you can't do that in here <laughs> because um, it is excruciatingly cold because the water does not heat up that fast in here, but there's only a 20 gallon water tank. So I had to get on board with the idea that I needed to let the water run and waste and not turn it off while I was taking a shower. But I found that I can take, you know, two or three good showers without having to get more water. No big deal. Now, you might know that I normally have a Berkey water filter inside of my rig, but I don't in here because 
I have so little water in here that I didn't want to drink that water. So I do get water um, at the store in this nice big jug. And that's what I drink out of. Now, I do miss my Ogo composting toilet. You guys might know that I have that in the truck camper and in the fifth wheel. And, you know, if you're a boondocker, having a composting toilet is choice because you're not using all your water to flush the toilets and you don't have to go dump your tanks that much. So I'm looking for a solution for that right now. I need to pop over to Ogo and look because I think they have a hood that I can use and install a composting toilet in here. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um, I'll put the link for Ogo below if you guys um, want to see their toilets. Now, as you guys know, I'm still working full time. So this dinette had to become a desk for me. And I have a lot of office, camera, and art supplies. And there is no room in here to store that kind of stuff. So I searched and searched, and I found something finally that worked. This is a trunk organizer that fits perfectly on the dinette that has these flaps that hold all of my stuff. And no, I'm not going to show you because it's a mess in there. By the way, the boy, my cat, loves it in here. He's just visiting a neighbor right now so that he is not underfoot while I'm filming this because this is a small space. I know a lot of you are going to be saying, yeah, but if it's so small, where do you put the litter box? Well, that was one of the really good things about the 16RB. Below the bed here, I removed a door that goes to an outside bin. And I was able to find a litter box that I could fit back there so the boy can just walk into the outside bin from underneath the bed and then I can empty his box from the outside. There's not a lot of storage in here. So I had to really pare down what I brought. Now you can see there are these rolling cabinet doors here. What I found is that they look good and things don't fly out of them if you remember to shut them. But it's hard to put like hard sided storage bins in them because they don't want to open and they don't want to shut. So in a few of these cabinets, I used rope baskets and in other ones, I was able to find some plastic bins that work. Now, if you're not on the road yet, you have got to put things inside of baskets or bins in the cabinets because if you don't, everything falls over in there, like especially if you have canned goods or olive oil or something, you don't want that to happen. Now, let me tell you guys about power. This Airstream does not have enough power for me as a boondocker. It's something that I'm going to be working on. There is 90 watts of solar on the roof, um, but there's no inverter in here. Now, the lady that sold it to me kept saying there was an inverter, but it turns out it was a converter. Now, if you don't know the difference, an inverter gives you power to your outlets inside, um, like when you're boondocking, so you don't have to have a hookup. A converter is what you use when you have a hookup. <laughs> So I can't blame her for that because they never camped in this thing um, without a hookup. Another thing about Airstreams now is that they have an electric only refrigerator. Now this baby refrigerator really does not take that much power. That is true. And I have to buy a lot less propane. But that 90 watts of solar on the roof, um, which goes into my 12 volt batteries and then the refrigerator runs off that 12 volt, um, it's not really enough. It might keep me going for a day. So as you can see in this picture here, I do have external solar panels that I use to charge my batteries. And of course I use my Jackeries with some external solar panels. So that way I can plug things in, charge my devices, run the TV at night and stuff like that. I am thinking about getting more solar and an inverter, but I haven't decided yet. But when I do, I'll let you know. And by the way, I know everyone's going to ask me, like, where did you get that spigot? Where did you get those air plants? And where did you get that disco ball? So um, if you go to the link that's pinned at the top of comments, I'll have a special list with all this stuff in Amazon. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. I love camping in this RV, and I've got all kinds of plans for where I'm going to take it. If you have a rig that you love, please tell me about it down in the comments below. Or if you're just dreaming about getting out there someday, what are you thinking about getting? I'd love to hear all about it. I'll see you guys next Sunday with an all-new video. Until then, everybody out there, have happy travels and be free.